Hi guys, it's March 28th. Don't mind my watery eyes. I was out mowing for and raking a couple hours yesterday and the allergies are kicking in now. Um, so for March 28th, we're going to be reading from Deuteronomy 33 through 34, Ecclesiastes 3, 9 through 22, and John 3. So Deuteronomy chapter 33, Moses blesses the people. This is the blessing that Moses, the man of God, gave to the people of Israel before his death. Put the music back on. It's Jesus Christ. The Lord came from Mount Sinai and dawned upon us from Mount Seir. He shone forth from Mount Paran and came from with flaming fire at his right hand. Indeed, you love the people. All your holy ones are in your hands. They follow in your steps and accept your instruction. Moses charged us with the law, the special possession of the assembly of Israel. The Lord became king in Israel when the leaders of the people assembled, when the tribes of Israel gathered. Moses said this about the tribe of Reuben, Let the tribe of Reuben live and not die out, even though their tribe is small. Moses said this about the tribe of Judah, O Lord, hear the cry of Judah and bring them again to their people. Give them strength to defend their cause. Help them against their enemies. Moses said this about the tribe of Levi, O Lord, you have given the sacred lots to your faithful servants, the Levites. You put them to the test at Massa and contended with them at the waters of Meribah. The Levites obeyed your word... <laughs> The Levites obeyed your word and guarded your covenant. They were more loyal to you than to their parents, relatives, and children. Now let them teach your regulations to Jacob. Let them give your instructions to Israel. They will present incense before you and offer whole burnt offerings on the altar. Bless the Levites, O Lord, and accept all their work. Crush the loins of their enemies. Strike down their foes so they never rise again. Moses said this about the tribe of Benjamin. The people of Benjamin are loved by the Lord and live in safety beside him. He surrounds them continuously and preserves them from every harm. Moses said this about the tribes of Joseph. May the land be blessed by the Lord with the, with the choice gift of rain from the heavens and water from beneath the earth, with the riches that grow in the sun and the bounty produced each month, with the finest crops of the ancient mountains and the abundance from the everlasting hills, with the best gifts of the earth and its fullness. In the favor of the one who appeared in the burning bush. May these blessings rest on Joseph's head, crowning the brow of the prince among his brothers. Joseph has the strength and majesty of a young bull. His power is like the horns of a wild ox. He will gore distant nations, driving them to the ends of the earth. This is my blessing for the multitudes of Ephraim and the thousands of Manasseh. Moses said this about the tribes of Zebulun and Issachar. May the people of Zebulun prosper in their expeditions abroad. May the people of Issachar prosper at home in their tents. They summon the people to the mountain to offer proper sacrifices there. They benefit from the riches of the sea and the hidden treasures of the sand. Moses said this about the tribe of Gad. Blessed is the one who enlarges Gad's territory. Gad is poised there like a lion to tear off an arm or a head. The people of Gad took the best land for themselves. A leader's share was assigned to them. When the leaders of the people were assembled, they carried out the Lord's justice and obeyed his regulations for Israel. Moses said this about the tribe of Dan. Dan is a lion's cub leaping out from Bashan. Moses said this about the tribe of Naphtali. O oh, Naphtali, you are rich in favor and full of the Lord's blessings. May you possess the west and the south. Moses said this about the tribe of Asher. May Asher be blessed above other sons. May he be esteemed by his brothers. May he bathe his feet in olive oil. May the bolts of your gates be of iron and bronze. May your strength match the length of your days. There is no one like the God of Israel. He rides across the heavens to help you, across the skies in majestic splendor. The eternal God is your refuge, and his everlasting arms are under you. He thrusts out the enemy before you. It is he who cries, destroy them, so Israel will live in safety. Prosperous Jacob in security in a land of grain and wine, while the heavens drop down dew. How blessed you are, O Israel. Who else is like you, a people saved by the Lord? He is your protecting shield and your triumphant sword. Your enemies will bow low before you, and you will trample on their backs. Chapter 24 the death of Moses. Then Moses went to Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab and climbed Pisgah Peak, which is across from Jericho. 
And the Lord showed him the whole land from Gilead as far as Dan, all the land of Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah extending to the Mediterranean Sea, the Negev, the Jordan Valley with Jericho, the city of Palms, as far as Zor. Then the Lord said to Moses, This is the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I told them I would give it to their descendants. I have now allowed you to see it, but you will not enter the land. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, just as the Lord had said. He was buried in a valley near Beth Peor in Moab. But to this day, no one knows the exact place. Moses was 120 years old when he died, yet his eyesight was clear and he was as strong as ever. The people of Israel mourned 30 days for Moses on the plains of Moab until this customary period of mourning was over. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. So the people of Israel obeyed him and did everything just as the Lord had commanded Moses. There has never been another prophet like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. The Lord sent Moses to perform all the miraculous signs and wonders in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh, all his servants, and his entire land. And it was through Moses that the, Moses that the Lord demonstrated his mighty power and terrifying acts in the sight of all Israel. And we are done with Deuteronomy. Okay, now we have Ecclesiastes 3. Okay, Ecclesiastes 3, 9 through 22. 9 through 22. Okay. What do people really get for all their hard work? I have thought about this in connection with the various kinds of work God has given people to do. God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. So I concluded that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to enjoy themselves as long as they can. And people should eat and drink and enjoy the fruits of their labor, for these are gifts from God. And I know that whatever God does is final. Nothing can be added to it or taken from it. God's purpose in this is that people should fear him. Whatever exists today and whatever will exist in the future has already existed in the past. For God calls each event back in its turn. The injustices of life. I also noticed that throughout the world there is evil in the courtroom. Yes, even in the courts of law, they are corrupt. I said to myself, in due season, God will judge everyone, both good and bad, for all their deeds. Then I realized that God allows people to continue in their sinful way so he can test them. That way, they can see for themselves that they are no better than animals. For humans and animals both breathe the same air and both die. So people have no real advantage over the animals. How meaningless. Both go to the same place, the dust from which they came and to which they must return. For who could prove that the human spirit goes upward and the spirit of animals goes downward into the earth? So I saw that there is nothing better for people than to be happy in their work. That is why they are here. No one will bring them back from death to enjoy life in the future. True. Okay, John chapter 3. Jesus and Nicodemus. Nicodemus. One dark evening, a Jewish religious leader named Nicodemus, a Pharisee, came to speak with Jesus. Teacher, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are proof enough that God is with you. Jesus replied, I assure you, unless you are born again, you can never see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, The truth is, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. <clears throat> Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives new life from heaven. So don't be surprised at my statement that you must be born again. Just as you can hear the wind but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. What do you mean? Nicodemus asked. Jesus replied, You are a respected Jewish teacher, and yet you don't understand these things? I assure you, I am telling you what we know and have seen, and yet you won't believe us. But if you don't even believe me when I tell you about things that happen here on earth, how can you possibly believe if I tell you what is going on in heaven? For only I, the Son of Man, have come to earth and will return to heaven again. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so I, the Son of Man, must be lifted up on a pole, so that everyone who believes in me will have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. 
God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. There is no judgment awaiting those who trust him. But those who do not trust him have already been judged for not believing in the only son of God. Their judgment is based on this fact. The light from heaven came into the world, but they loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. They hate the light because they want to sin in the darkness. They stay away from the light for fear their sins will be exposed and they will be punished. But those who do what is right come to the, to the light gladly, so everyone can see that they are doing what God wants. John the Baptist exalts Jesus. Afterward, Jesus and his disciples left Jerusalem, but they stayed in Judea for a while and baptized there. At this time, John the Baptist was baptizing at Anon near Salem, because there was a plenty of because there was plenty of water there, and people kept coming to him for baptism. This was before John was put into prison. At that time, a certain Jew began an argument with John's disciples over ceremonial so ceremonial cleansing. John's disciples came to him and said, "Teacher, the man you met on the other side of the Jordan River, the one you said was the Messiah." is also baptizing people, and everybody is going over there instead of coming here to us. John replied, God in heaven appoints each person's work. You yourselves know how plainly I told you that I am not the Messiah. I am here to prepare the way for him. That is all. The bride will go where the bridegroom is. A bridegroom's friend rejoices with him. I am the bridegroom's friend, and I am filled with joy at his success. He must become greater and greater, and I must become less and less. He has come from above and is greater than anyone else. I am of the earth, and my understanding is limited to the things of earth. He tells what he has seen and heard, but how few people, how few believe what he tells them. Those who believe him discover that God is true, for he is sent by God. He speaks God's words, for God's spirit is upon him without measure or limit. The Father loves his Son, and he has given him authority over everything. And all who believe in God's Son have eternal life. Those who don't obey the Son will never experience eternal life, but the wrath of God remains upon them. That is all for today's reading. Thank you for joining us, and I will see you next time.